Are you planning to work in Germany or have relocated and are on the lookout for new job opportunities? If so, you're in for a treat. Welcome to a special English-speaking episode of our podcast Berufsoptimierer, where I will guide you through the essential steps to thrive with the application in the German job market. Let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of the Berufsoptimierer podcast. And I have to say, I'm thrilled to record today's episode because I've been thinking about this for quite a while now, where producing um, English-speaking episodes, because I have worked with so many English-speaking clients and they often say, Bastian, it's a shame you haven't got a podcast in English. So in the end, it was my client, Janice, who gave me the push to do this. So thank you very much, Janice. This is happening. Um, if you're listening for the first time, um, let me quickly introduce myself. I have a background of over 10 years in recruitment, working for international companies in the automotive industry until 2016. In 2017, I ventured into my own career coaching and training business, where I've had the privilege to work with more than a thousand people, assisting them in finding new jobs and navigating career changes. When I'm not working, you will find me exploring the beautiful Bavarian region of the Allgäu through hiking, mountain biking and running. So that's about me. Let's talk about what I will be sharing with you today. Because my mission for today's episode is to provide you with everything you need to know about your application documents. So I will share as a first step my knowledge from my experience as a recruiter and, of course, other recruiters, and also my experience as a coach, so you know what recruiters want and what they expect to see in your application. Second, we will be talking about crafting your application documents, what documents are part of an application, what information is necessary, and, for example, where are the differences between international CVs and CVs for Germany. And lastly, we will be talking briefly about salary. Yes, people, this is important because it's important to know what you need to be aware of when sending out your application to your dream company. Because there's a difference when it comes to salaries in Germany in terms of gross and net and where the differences are, we will be covering this as in the, in the third part of this episode. So let's start with part number one, my knowledge from my experience as a recruiter and in preparation to this episode today, I have also asked some recruiter friends of mine, um, especially thanks to Jessica and Florian, um, who provided me with some feedback and some insight on what they also expect as recruiters. And let me just narrow this down to a couple of things. So when you send out your application, The thing that recruiters or the things that recruiters expect are three things. First, they expect an individual cover letter. And I know there are already some companies out there who don't really need a cover letter. But let me be honest, I would say 80% or even 90% of the companies in Germany, they expect a cover letter. And the cover letter should only be one page. Then they expect a tailored CV. And if you Google um, international CVs or CVs in US style or UK style, the thing is most of these CVs or in general, these CVs kind of all look the same. And the differences they have is through the, the, the text, what is written, the, the things applicants talk about. But this is not how it works in Germany. It's not about having the same CV as everybody else. And to be honest, I think this is a very good way because it makes it comparable. So there are some things you need to focus on when creating your CV. And I will, talking about, I will be talking about this in the second part. Your work certificates and certificates of your qualifications and educational courses you took. Here in Germany, we love references and qualifications. Um, so it's very important that you add these documents to your application. And if you say, Bastian, uh, I have around about 100 different documents about qualifications, which documents should I add? Two things are important. 
One, when we are talking about work certificates, certificates of your qualifications and educational courses, it's just important to know that German recruiters love these documents, these references. And if you ask yourself, okay, so Bastian, I don't know, I have around about a 50, 50 different qualifications and documents and certificates. Should I send all of them? No, you shouldn't. Because the thing is, what is important in terms of work certificates should be maybe, I don't know, the last five years or something like that. Because um, no, your recent uh, position you worked in or the recent uh, company you worked for. When it comes to courses or certificates for educational, uh, for further education, um, you should only add the documents um, that you are also, or you should only add the, the certificates that you'll also be talking about in your CV. So, I don't know, when there's an exit course you took, I don't know, 10 years ago, for example, um, but you're not saying this in your CV, you wouldn't need to add this document. And what you can always do to be on the safe side, yeah, if you say, okay, Bastian, I have around about 50 different documents, you can always say in your um, email or in the text, let's say the cover letter, or even um, when you upload your documents to the applicant tracking system the company uses, there's always a small info box. You can always say to them, um, further qualifications or further documents I, I can send up on request. And then you're on the safe side, saying I also have some other documents also for you. Another thing is that um, it's important to know that when you send out your application, and this is also for people um, who are applying for a job in general, think about when you send out your application, let's say, I don't know, you have an engineering degree and you're very deep into engineering or software development or whatever it is, okay? Think about the non-expert you're addressing. What do I mean by this? The thing is, people who sit in HR often they are not experts for engineering or software things. They are experts for recruiting and HR. So when you address them, when you write your cover letter or when you design your CV, think about that the only thing these people do or the only question they have to answer for themselves is if you are capable of the job, yes or no. And if you are capable of the job, yes, they pass your CV on to the business area or to the, to the hiring manager. So... It's important to know that when you design your application documents to think about the non-expert and this is why you also need to repeat or kind of use the content of the job advertisement in your application documents. And second, here we're talking about um, also demonstrating your experience and the successes you had in your career. This is for the person, this is for the hiring manager. So the person can decide whether you have the necessary project or whether you've had the necessary experiences for the position. So there are always two people you're addressing when you're sending out your application documents. All right, then of course, a big plus in Germany, and I know we're just a small country, but yeah, <laughs> a lot of people want to work in Germany. German is a huge advantage. So my suggestion or my um, advice is if you have the chance to take some German language courses or to connect with someone who speaks German where you can practice your German and I know how it is for people from abroad as soon as they start working in Germany. How is it? Well, you come from abroad, you speak English very well, you start working in a company and all the other colleagues who speak German fluently, they say, oh, perfect, I can practice my English. And the thing is, through that, you wouldn't, you won't learn German. So you need to find someone, where uh, a person you can practice your German language with, because German is a big advantage. Uh, this is what Florian always uh, also said to me: if people speak a little bit of German and also know the cultural differences in terms of communication, in terms of punctuality, right? These big German values, then it's a very huge advantage. Another thing is the salary expectation. Every job advertisement or when you apply for a job, either in your application documents, you should write your salary expectation. 
Um, and if they don't ask this in the job advertisement, they might ask it in the applicant management slash applicant um, tracking system. So asking for a salary expectation. So it's important to also know your numbers. But as I said, we will be talking about this in a couple of minutes. Another thing is, I've also, in preparation for this episode, I also uh, googled and researched how um, other coaches from abroad in the US or in other countries, what kind of um, suggestions and advice they have for their people. And there's a lot of talking about algorithms that go through your CV and highlight or take out all the relevant information. And if there's no relevant information, there's an automatic uh, decline. The thing is, we are not there yet in Germany. Also in terms of, um, I don't know if you heard about the Allgemeine Gleichbehandlungsgesetz, meaning to exclude any forms of discrimination. In Germany, yes, we have this law and it's very important to treat everyone equal, totally agreed. But the thing is, when it comes to application documents, um, and that's why a photo is so important, and I will be talking about this also about in the next couple of minutes, is that in Germany, recruitment is yeah, kind of also a people thing, okay? So that's why it's important to know there's no algorithm going through your CV. There's a person reading this through. And if you have a friendly picture and no headshot, like you would have it, for example, for your... Um, personal ID because this this is what I also realized when I was recruiting a lot of people from India they always had these headshots these uh, personal ID photos where no one was smiling and the picture was a bit blurry this is not the thing but yeah I will be talking about this in a couple of minutes what I want to say is there's no algorithm realize when you're talking to um um, when you're in contact with recruiters, when you send out your application, you have to think about the person going through this. And this is why it's important to know that CVs don't have to be a one-page document. They should include a picture and they should have a little bit of design. But um, let's talk about the last thing, um, work certificates and also your university degree. Some professions in Germany, such as medicine, engineering, or teaching, they require qualifications, of course. The thing is, if you have passed your degree in a different country, maybe a non-European country, it's important to research whether your qualifications need to be evaluated and accepted in Germany. And um, the German expression for that is beglaubigte Urkunden, beglaubigte Zeugnisse. And if, if you're interested in how you can do this, just send me a message. I will uh, give you my email address at the end. But if you want to know how to get these beglaubigte Urkunden, how to get your um, certificates beglaubigt, so they are accepted here in Germany, just um, let me know. Let's talk about crafting your application documents. This is the second part of this episode. So it's important um, that the style of applying for a job outside Germany is different. What do I mean by that? <clears throat> Mostly recruiters, international recruiters that are interviewed and where they post an article on the internet, they always say it's all about passion. You have to bring in your passion into your cover letter, blah, blah, blah. The thing is, in Germany, it's about value. It's not about passion. Passion comes when you sit in the job interview and you show them you're interested. But first, when you write your cover letter, please do not do the mis uh, make the mistake that most people do, writing, I was thrilled to read your job advertisement and um, uh, I can really think myself into this position. Please don't do that. Please start with value. And what I mean by value is... When you're addressing the person, the recruiter who's reading your CV, uh, your cover letter, sorry, um, start with, okay, so there are requirements in the job advertisement, right? A university degree, some experience, some knowledge and tools, etc. So you should start your 
the first paragraph of the cover letter should start with that, saying something like, I don't know, with five years of experience in this and this area and a successful um, uh, uh, um, completed degree in blah, 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 and a special knowledge in this and that, I'm applying at the above mentioned position in your company. This is so important because as I said, a couple of minutes ago, recruiters asked themselves, are you capable of doing the job? Yes or no. And the only thing how they can check this is by comparing the job advertisement with your application documents. This is the only thing they will be doing. And here we are also in terms of tailored documents. Okay, so CV and cover letter should always be tailored, focusing on the job advertisement or the, the job you're applying for. And you could use the job advertisement also for orientation and also in terms of structure when building your cover letter. Um, I've done now, I don't know how many, well, as a recruiter, around about 2,000, 3,000 CVs uh, and, and cover letters I've read almost sounding the same and as a coach and as a um, person who optimizes and checks application documents of my clients um, I have optimized so many application documents where people afterwards were more successful in getting the interview for the job and here's what I've experienced after the last six years what structure in a cover letter really works so step number one and of course, you have the the um, the person you're addressing the cover letter to. So if there's no one, you should maybe research the person on LinkedIn. And we just learned the first paragraph was um, talking about value. And this value is always related to the requirements of the job advertisement. Okay, so first paragraph. Second paragraph should be focusing on the tasks and responsibilities, right? Where it says... In this position as a project manager, you will be responsible for ABC and you will be working with XYZ. And in this second paragraph, you now relate to this, the require, uh, the um, tasks and responsibilities of the job advertisement. So saying something like, in my position as a blah, 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 I'm responsible for this and that. And um, I uh, also handle projects related to this and that. And... Um, and this is very important. This is key. Now add a success, something like, yeah, and through my um, my work in this and this project, we were able to reduce, increase, um, leverage, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, by so and so many percent. And when you when you write this second paragraph and you relate to the responsibilities of the job advertisement, the person will see as the first paragraph, okay, capable of doing the job. Second paragraph, okay, knows what needs to be done in this job to be successful. And the third paragraph of your cover letter should cover motivation, okay? And motivation here is the is, is same as important as the value for the job you're offering. So when you think about motivation, yeah, passion, blah, blah. I'm sorry, but this is something that doesn't get you the job. What gets you the job is to understand, okay, um, I've worked in this and this area before uh, or have some skills that are related to this position I'm currently applying for. And maybe combining my, um, um, my past experience with the position I'm applying for could be a great advantage for the company in terms of X, Y, Z. And also for me in terms of X, Y, Z. So this is how you build this paragraph about motivation. And then the fourth paragraph is about availability and salary expectation. And then you have the salutation and then you're finished with the cover letter. Okay, so it's actually, it's a it's a step-by-step -step process. And the thing you need is the job advertisement. And then you're good to go to build your cover letter in a very easy way. And now we've spoken about cover letter, let's talk about the CV. Because when I see international CVs, mostly they don't have a picture, they are just black and white, no design at all. Um, and if it has a picture, as I said, it's just a kind of a mugshot, a headshot, no smiling, no, uh, um, uh, no, no uh, special clothes, etc. 
And the picture is in Germany is key. In 2017, the company Stepstone, one of the big, biggest uh, companies or the biggest um, online platform for jobs in Germany, they did a study with recruiters. And they gave them CVs and did an eye tracking study to see where do recruiters go first or where do they look first when they go through CV documents. And guess what? The first thing where the eyes went to is the picture. And this is why a picture, a photo is so important in your CV because it can really make a difference. The second thing is, um, yes, there's this US format where you have this, um, this short paragraph about uh, what you're looking for, what kind of position you're looking for. Then you have the next paragraph talking about uh, you're highly motivated with hands-on experience, blah, blah, blah person. And then you have also your uh, competencies. And Florian had a very good argument about that because he said, well, first of all, since you have a cover letter in Germany, you don't need this statement at the top. You have a cover letter. Cover letter should cover this. Secondly, this statement is always in written text. And my advice is to use bullet points. And fun fact, how should these, where should these bullet points relate to? Of course, the job advertisement. So when it says, uh, I don't know, so many, so many years of experience in, you say so and so many experience in and you um, make it more concrete if you're talking about the relevant experience you have in this area. Okay, so you just use the requirements of the job advertisement and also kind of copy paste this into your short profile at the beginning of the CV and you find um, things that relate to the job advertisement based on your experience and skill. Then you add a photo on the right or the left hand side, you can decide. Um, and you don't need these competency word bubble thing anymore where you say I don't know I have 20 different competencies like uh, I don't know um, hands-on mentality uh, hard working blah 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 please don't do that because if you put this into your CV everyone can put this into their CV the better thing is to think okay I have this skill let's say communication skills then add a short sentence why you have these communication skills for example Communication skills through working with cross-functional departments on an international scale. Then you explain why you have communication skills and now it makes sense. Now it's not just a word, okay? Now it's a sentence with proof. Once you have this, so we start at the top with um, the uh, headline, CV or curriculum vitae. Then we have the personal information. On the right-hand side, we have the photo. Below that, we have like a, like a short profile, these, uh, let's say, three to five bullet points related to the job advertisement. Then you start with your experience from when until when, what position, what company, and what did you do at the company. And you can choose whether you want to talk about the duties, so your, your responsibilities, or you want to talk about successes. This is also a way of uh, demonstrating your experience and skill. So you can choose whatever you want. The next thing is education, right? So where did you do your university degree or training? And then um, further skills or even IT and uh, or software and language skills. And if you like, you can also add further accomplishments, maybe a scholarship or something like that. And then... Um, you, um, if you like, you can also add the further education qualifications and I don't know, Excel or some courses you took via Udemy and then signature, and then you're finished with your CV signature and date. And then you're finished with your CV and you're good to go. Okay. So there was a lot of information about application documents, about the cover letter and the CV. But I mean, we both know this is crucial for your success to be invited to a job interview. And if you have the chance when you're applying at a company, maybe translate your CV in German and English, because 
the recruiting person might not be very good in, in English, but the hiring manager might be very good in English. And now through that, you cover a person who doesn't speak German, uh, who doesn't speak English so well, and you cover a person who speaks English very well. And then when you write your CV in German and English, and there are also services, companies that offer that, or you use ChatGPT, for example, <laughs> for translation or Google Translator, um, you should be good to go to have a CV also in the German language. Okay, if you have any further questions in terms of your application documents, at the end of the podcast episode, I will give you an email address where you can write me. Um, you can also, if you like, book, um, and it's called Erstgespräch, so it's like a, like a short meeting, 30 minutes via the phone, where we're talking about what kind of, um, yeah, problems you have with your application documents or even with applying so yeah shoot me a message or contact me via linkedin i look forward to it and now i want to talk to you about salary and salary in your application documents usually is in your cover letter so at the end of your cover letter you say i'm available i don't know as soon as possible and my salary expectation is between x and y And what most people don't know when they're from abroad is there's a difference between gross, in Germany it's called brutto, and net, netto. And gross and net um, is important because when you send out your application, you always communicate the gross, never the net. Why? Well, in Germany you pay tax and insurance um, with your salary and... When your um and your when your employer when your employer pays you, no, hands out your gives you the pay slip. You can see that tax and insurance is directly reduced by the from the gross amount, and the difference is your net. So, why cannot you communicate your net? Because there are differences in tax group in Germany in terms of insurances and other things, and that's why you always have to give them your gross amount. And if you are insecure about salary, okay, so what can I ask for? What is a proper salary in that area? Research salaries on pages like, for example, kununu.de or glassdoor.com.de. Um, but please do not take this for granted, okay? Do some more research in the industry because there's also a difference between a manufacturer, a supplier and a consulting company okay so there are also salary differences in that please do not argument when you i don't know look for a salary at bmw and you're talking to a recruiter from a consulting company in the automotive industry saying yeah at bmw uh, this is the salary you pay for an engineering position okay so it's not comparable this is this is really important to know and then um it's important to to know that um Of course, you could ask people about their salary, right? To know, okay, what, what do they pay in that area? And some people might give you some information. And uh, yes, network is, of course, crucial when finding a job in Germany. But not all everyone is so open about salary. So just be aware of the fact that people don't like to talk about salary so openly. And the last thing in terms of research, but also in terms of salary bans is... We have tariff contracts at some industries in Germany. So, um, for example, the IG Metall tariff contract in the industry, in the engineering industry, for example, is a tariff contract where it says, based on your experience um, and your competencies, your salary is that. And often it's not really negotiable. So think about that. And it's a good thing to, to have these tariff, tariff contracts because when you do your research, you can also research, research tariff contracts in Germany to get a better understanding um, of what, what is paid in that industry. And then it helps you also with your salary expectation when you're applying for a job in a company where, you, where they might don't have uh, a tariff contract. Okay. So we've spoken about what recruiters expect. We spoke about your application documents, so what you should put into your cover letter, what you, put, what you should put into your CV, why a photo is crucial, etc. And um, 
If you are planning to work in Germany or have recently relocated and now you are seeking a new position, um, let's talk now at the end of this episode about the most important takeaways of this episode. So first, mastering the German language and understanding the country's work culture is a big plus for successful job search, also in terms of networking. Then it's important to craft a well-structured CV to, and also tailor it to the position, the same as your cover letter for each application you're sending out. And my pro tip at this stage is to, why don't you create yourself some master documents? So you have a master cover letter. I don't know, it has three, four or five pages with different paragraphs you've created already. And you create yourself a master CV that has a lot of different um, styles on one hand, but that ho also has um, listed different responsibilities you've had in your previous jobs. And then you just need to um, cross out or take away, delete. Yeah, that was the word I was looking for. Delete the ones you do not need to put the focus more on the uh, res responsibilities and skills that are relevant for the position. So master CV, master cover letter saves you a lot of time. And then be aware of the difference between gross and net. Usually it's right about 40% that is reduced from your gross because you pay for tax and insurance in Germany. And it always depends on your tax group and in communication. So in terms of sending out your application, you are always talking about gross. Also in the job interview, when you negotiate, you always negotiate the gross. And that's important to know. And I just, I just, um, another thing popped into my mind. There are some companies who pay 13 or 14 months salary. So let's say you have your, your salary expectation is 60,000 euros and the company pays 14 months salary. It's called Christmas money and holiday money. Of course, the 60,000 over 14 months per month is less than 60,000 for 12 months. So what you should always do when you write this into your cover letter, when you write the salary expectation in your cover letter, as you do not know whether the company has uh, 12 months, uh, 13 months or 14 months salary payment, is um, my salary expectation is 60,000 by, uh, by 12 months, for example. And then you're always on the safe side. All right. So as I said at the beginning, um, this is my first English recording or English speaking episode in the Bruce Optimira podcast. I'm curious whether you liked it. Even if you are not an English native speaker, you're just listening into this podcast episode because you said, Bastian said he's taping, a, he's recording an English speaking episode. So I look forward to your feedback and um, I'm doing a test at the moment. So I will be releasing two more episodes, one per month. So until September, 2023, um, I will be talking about job interview, working in Germany. And if there's anything you say, Bastian, it's more important if you could talk about this in one of your next episode, shoot me a message at hallo at berufsoptimierer.de or connect, connect with me via LinkedIn. It's Bastian Hughes and um, subscribe to this podcast if you don't want to miss another episode. And in the meantime, if you uh, like, you can practice your German language skills by listening to the other episodes. And you know what? If you found this episode helpful and think, okay, there are a lot of things I didn't know before and there are some people in my network who would also benefit from this knowledge, it would be great if you could share this episode with your network. I look forward to hearing you in one of the next episodes. Thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to either hearing from you soon or maybe having you in the next episode. Stay tuned for another English speaking episode coming your way. Bis bald. See you soon. Yours, Bastian.